Hey folks, in the previous video, we covered the key aspects of Swift concurrency to build a solid mental model of it. In this video, we will discuss structured and unstructured tasks. You'll see that their behavior can be tricky in some scenarios, but we'll break it down into rules to make it clear. I assume you are already familiar with the basic concepts of structured concurrency, like async let and task group. From previous video, we know that to switch gears from sync context to async context, we need to use tasks. However, that is not the only use case for tasks. Tasks are, in fact, a much broader concept in Swift concurrency. Tasks are units of asynchronous work you can run from your code. Every async function is executing in a task. In other words, a task is to asynchronous functions, what a thread is to synchronous functions. A task runs one function at a time. A single task has no concurrency. Synchronous functions do not necessarily run as part of a task, but they can. In terms of structured concurrency, there are two kinds of tasks. Structured concurrency tasks, or simply structured tasks, represented by async let and task group, and unstructured concurrency tasks, or simply unstructured tasks, represented by regular unstructured task and detached task. What is the difference between structured and unstructured tasks? Why they are actually called structured and unstructured? What does it mean? To understand the difference we need to understand the parent and child relation for tasks. There are parent and child tasks in structured concurrency. Parent task is a task that spawns one or more subtasks, which also called child tasks. Parent task is responsible for managing its child tasks. Child task is a subtask created within the context of a parent task. Parent and child tasks together form a task tree structure that simplifies control over related tasks, completion, cancellation, and resource management. Root task is an initial task in task tree, also called a root node, which can be parent if it spawns child tasks. Structured task can be a child or parent task or both, but it cannot be root node in the task tree. Unstructured task cannot be a child task, but it can be a parent task if you create new child structured tasks from them. In other words, unstructured task can only be a root node in task tree structure. That's why they are called structured and unstructured tasks. Structured tasks always join the current task tree structure as child tasks. Unstructured tasks never join the current task tree. They start a new independent task tree with no parent-child relation to the original task, with child tasks created later if needed. Although we can nest one unstructured task within another, don't be misled by that. It doesn't create a parent-child relationship between them, regardless of whether the tasks are regular or detached. Later, we will demonstrate through examples that the behavior defined for a task tree hierarchy is fundamentally different for nested unstructured tasks. Structured tasks in Swift are represented by asynclet and task group. Although it may not be obvious with asynclet, both of them create child tasks within the parent task where they are used. The child tasks created by asynclet and task group are designed to be executed concurrently. With async let, you can start multiple tasks that run concurrently. Although it is not explicitly stated in code, three new child tasks are created here, one for each async let. If you need to create a dynamic number of concurrent tasks, a task group is the better choice. Important difference with async let is the order of awaiting results. Unlike async let, where the order is code driven, task group follows a first finished, first handled approach. This is how an async sequence works. Unstructured tasks are usually used as a bridge between sync and async contexts. If we create some structured child tasks inside of unstructured task, unstructured task will be a root task in the task tree and parent task for structured tasks. Unstructured tasks are represented by regular, it is not a common term, we will call it regular just to give it a distinctive name, and detached tasks. Life cycle of unstructured tasks does not bound to the local scope or a single closure like async let or task group. When execution leaves local scope, unstructured task will simply continue its execution. 
what is the difference between regular and detached tasks, when to use each of them. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but for now, we can say that a regular task inherits the execution context, while a detached task does not. It's quite hard to think of a specific scenario where a detached task would be useful, so in most cases, using a regular task is the better choice. Next, let's try to define the rules of structured concurrency. The task tree structure enables cooperative operations, offering features such as priority escalation, which means when setting a higher priority on a child task, the parent task's priority is automatically escalated. We can consider those feature as some kind of structured concurrency rules. Error propagation rule, group cancellation rule, and group completion rule. If you like acronyms for better memorization, you can use EGG. We will explore how these rules work within structured concurrency tasks and compare them with the behavior of nested unstructured tasks. You will see that these rules apply to tasks that are part of a single task tree structure, but they do not work for nested unstructured tasks. Let's start with group completion rule. In a parent task, you can't forget to wait for its child tasks to complete. Parent task can't complete until child tasks are completed. Awaiting parent task's value means waiting until it completes. Parent task completes will not be printed until all child tasks created by async lets are completed first. For task group inside of unstructured parent task, behavior will be the same. But it doesn't work the same way for nested unstructured tasks once there are no parent-child relation there. As you can see in this example, root task completes even before nested task is started. But we can achieve the desired behavior if we explicitly await nested task inside root task. We just need to await both nested and root unstructured tasks. To sum up, async lets will be implicitly awaited when execution leaves the local scope, which allows parent task to complete after that as well, so group completion still works as expected. Task group will implicitly await the completion of its child tasks when execution exits the task group closure, so parent task could complete after that as well, ensuring that group completion rule works as expected too. Nested unstructured task, if not awaited, will not cause the external task to wait for its completion. It behaves like a spawn and forget mechanism, which means it doesn't follow the group completion rule, which is expected because it is unstructured and has no parent. Group cancellation rule. If parent task is canceled, each of its child tasks is also automatically canceled. Let's consider an example where we have child structured task and parent unstructured task. Once unstructured task can only be a root task in a task tree, it can't be canceled automatically because it has no parent. It can be canceled only explicitly with cancel method. Doing that will cancel all child structured tasks in the task tree. That means Group cancellation rule works as expected for structured tasks. As also expected, group cancellation rule doesn't work for nested unstructured tasks. Nested unstructured tasks aren't canceled when root task is canceled. We have only explicit cancellation option with cancel method that is possible for them. Error propagation rule. If error is propagated outside of local scope, all child tasks are implicitly canceled and implicitly awaited. An async function can throw errors by being marked with both the async and throws. Error propagation in Swift refers to the process of passing errors up the call stack, allowing higher level code to handle or respond to issues that occur during execution. Let's check this rule with examples. Let's say we have an async func fast that throws an error after five seconds. And we also have similar slow function that throws error after 10 seconds. When we leave the local scope due to error, async lets and task group child tasks will be implicitly canceled and implicitly awaited. After fast function throws test error one, slow function is implicitly canceled and implicitly awaited. Test error one is propagated and caught outside of task group closure. That means error propagation rule is valid here. What about error propagation in unstructured tasks? As you can see, when we throw test error one from nested task, 
Error is propagated and get caught outside. Nested task 2 was not cancelled and ended later after that. That means error propagation rule doesn't work for nested unstructured tasks. Actually, there is another rule that works for both structured and unstructured tasks related to error propagation. Error is propagated from the task only if that task is awaited explicitly. No await, no propagation. In this example, we will leave the task group closure without error propagated because child tasks are not awaited. Context inheritance. Even though it's not the part of structured concurrency rules, let's discuss how structured and unstructured tasks inherit properties from the context they are created from. Regular unstructured task inherits. Task priority. In async context, when you create an unstructured task without specifying a priority, it inherits the priority from the current task. In sync context, it will use the priority of the thread or queue from which it was called. Task local values. Swift lets us attach metadata to a task using task local values, which are small pieces of information that any code inside a task can read. A task local value is bound and read in the context of a task. It is implicitly carried with the task and is accessible by any child tasks it creates. If we create unstructured task, is also inherit it from the task it was created from. In this example, the regular task inherits the request ID task local value. Both async let and task groups would also inherit it. However, a detached task will not inherit task local values. And the last thing it inherits is the actor we're currently running on, if we have any. Basically, it means that we inherit the context's executor, aka execution context. Structured task inherits the same as regular task except actor isolation. Some articles claim that child structured tasks created with async let inherit actor isolation from the context in which they are created. This can be misleading. Structured tasks do not inherit actor isolation from their surrounding context. It wouldn't make sense because structured tasks are designed to parallelize work, and inheriting actor isolation would force them to run everything on the same actor, if present, sequentially. By default, child structured tasks run on the global concurrent executor. However, keep in mind that any async functions you call within these tasks can have their own actor isolation. For async let, once it is assigned with a function call, it may look like as though it inherits the actor isolation of that function. But again, structured tasks never inherit actor isolation from the context where they are created. Detached task inherits nothing. On practice, it means that it always runs on the global concurrent executor, so it will run on any thread from cooperative thread pool, but not main thread for sure. When to use structured and unstructured concurrency? Let's start with when you actually need structured concurrency. You need it when you need to run multiple concurrent operations at once. But keep in mind, it's implicit awaiting behavior. When execution exits local scope, either normally or due to an error, all child tasks will be implicitly awaited. When to use async let versus task group? Several factors to consider. Amount of tasks, static count for async let, dynamic count for task groups. If you have error propagation logic, a task group may be a better choice than async let. The task group's first thrown, first caught logic is more predictable and won't be affected by the order of awaiting, unlike async let, where error propagation can be influenced by the awaiting order. Task groups are more suitable for cases where you want to fail fast compared to async let. And finally, async let can be easier to use with heterogeneous results and step-by-step -step initialization patterns. When to use unstructured concurrency. Obviously, use it when you need to switch gears from sync to async context. Regular unstructured task might also be used if you want to perform a piece of work independently of the function you're in without awaiting some fire and forget style operation that will allow the function to not wait for this task completion. Detached tasks use case is kind of tricky because hard to say exactly when you need it. That's why it's often referenced as a last resort when nothing else would suit. 
Anyway, make sure you really understand why usually it is not needed. Finally, for quick reference, keep this the helper table from Apple WWDC session. For structured tasks lifecycle when local scope is left, this scheme should be useful as well. If you spot any inaccuracies or misleading points in this video, please share them in the comments. Your feedback helps everyone. Good luck on your swift concurrency journey. See you in the next video.